this episode of The Silburn Show, the solution-oriented summit, creating a platform for effective discourse, seeking solutions and impacting actions, tackling knife and gun crime in our community. Let it not be our legacy. With your host, Silburn Sidiel and Stefan Gislane. With the Jamaican High Commissioner of the UK, His Excellency Mr. Seth George Romacan, from the High Commission perspective. How are you, sir? Fine, thank you. Fantastic. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, live streaming, we've got the, the High Commission of Jamaica, the Honorable Ambassador Seth Romacan. Did I get it right, sir? <laughs> Uh, sir, as you know, this this is the first of um, the Solution Oriented Summit here at the Jamaica Basic School Foundation. We found that in light of what is happening in London to somehow incorporate um, sessions on how to look at some of the solutions. As you are the Jamaica High Commissioner, um, what's your views on what's happening in London, well, UK, in, terms, knife, of, in yeah. terms of knife crime and knife gun crime, crime yeah. and your thoughts? Yeah, certainly this is a very unfortunate um, aspect of the issues that are happening on the ground, and particularly that, you know, it's predominantly young people that are involved. Um, this is something that I'm sure that the authorities have been doing some kind of study and investigation in really the causes because usually these things happen because there are some underlying reasons. Either it is that these young people feel um, inadequate, they feel ignored, uh, they feel a sense of um, not accomplishing what they would like and they want to make a name for themselves. And they do that by getting into gangs or other groups that seek to acknowledge them and make them feel that they are worth, they're a person. Usually, you'll find that they'll, you know, the persons who are trying to woo you into this kind of a behavior will try to make you feel that, well, this is a way to show power. Yes. And uh, that's very, very unfortunate. I would like to commend you for and your team for um, this initiative because I think the dialogue and the discourse is very, very important. I think the dialogue with the young people, because more than likely, you'll find that other young people, particularly in the community, they have a sense of uh, what's on the minds of these individuals, what they are going through. In fact, maybe some of them have been approached. And they can tell you, you know, what transpired, how it went about. Because unless we get to the root and, and meet these young people, then that is going to be. The second thing I'd like to uh, suggest, which I'm sure is something that you do, yeah. it's that there are a number of organizations within the community that um, have the interests of family and young people at heart. And uh, among them is the church. Yes. The church community um, has a leadership. It has compassion. It has a, a very uh, deep root into the community and has an interest in the well-being of the community. And I feel that um, if it were possible to get that sort of dialogue going with you know, these church groups and so on, um, it may bear some fruit. Because when I say bear fruit, it may not be immediate result of stopping knife crime. But you know, if you don't have proper knowledge as to what is driving this, what are the causes beneath it? Um, you're not going to be able to take, you know, um, adequate or, or proper action in order to solve it. So I, I, I heard your um, discourse. I heard a number of persons here today uh, sharing, and uh, you know, I think that that is just a great, great start. I'm sure a number of the folks sitting here are from communities in which they too are concerned and they would want to know, well, where is the solution? Yes. What is really going to be done? The last thing yes. I, would la I would want to see is that we go about, you know, uh, treating the young people um, with disdain because of this, yes. you know, I think we need to find a solution because I believe that they themselves are victims yes. and, uh, you know, we need to... So in a sense, what you're saying now is that uh, we've got to really engage with the young people. Yes. We've got to engage with the churches. That's right. We've got to engage with different um, 
organizations to be at the table to really discuss this thing. Now, there's always a saying that we talk too much and we keep talking, but I would agree with you and I believe that talking is important. Yes. Very important. Yes. Now, as with the High Commission, I mean, and uh, what are some of the, the concerns that you may have directly without saying much about Oh, yes. Well, we do have because uh, sometimes you find that when these things happen, it tends to reflect on our community. Yes. And unfortunately, it takes just one or two incidents for people to form some kind of um, a view of the community uh, that is uh, certainly um, doesn't properly represent, you know, who we are. But you know, whenever anything like this happens, and I do understand, the media will take it, and they really ride with it. Um, that doesn't happen necessarily when all the other good things are happening. So we have an interest in seeing this, um, you know, being downplayed because it tends to give the wrong impression of uh, the community, um, that, of the Caribbean, and particularly the Jamaican community, um, you know, where these things really occur. I would really love to um, hear from uh, some of the, uh, you know, persons who are doing the deeper investigation, the social workers who are in the communities and are working with these young people and some of the issues. I understand just from the little knowledge I have that there is a sort of um, lack of resources, you know, in some of these communities, that the schools um, do not necessarily have the same level of support for these children. Um, many of these children, you know, they, they leave school because um, of, you could say, affordability, yeah. you know, parents yeah. being able to do that. What I have discovered is that in many instances, the persons who carry out these incidents, when you check it out, they are gifted children. They are children who are bright. They are children who have great ideas. Uh, they are children who can think they are smart. And uh, so it is really a sort of uh, um, misdirection yes. of the use of very good, resources. very good resources, yes. very good talent, mm -hmm. very bright young people. If they had another kind of opportunity, another kind of chance, you'd be surprised to see how you know, they, they, they take off. Yes. yes. And what we need to do to, is to have one or two examples <laughs> of persons who were probably involved in that have come out of it and to have them be the persons who sit in seats like this. Yes, yes, that, that is so important, as you mentioned about the dialogue, and uh, that is something that through the organization, what we're doing is to also take that on board as well, especially for the young people, to let people hear what they are saying and what Absolutely. are some of the things, you know? Absolutely. But before you go, yes. um, what is your message to Jamaica? Tomorrow is Independence Day. Yes. And uh, what's your message to the Jamaican community? We're live streaming and uh, what's your message? Uh, are any key things also the yes. Jamaica High Commission is doing? Yeah, well, one of the things I'd like to say is that um, Jamaica is really making some very strides yeah. in terms of fulfilling its objective to become a developed country by the year 2030, which is the Vision 2030, Jamaica is aimed to become the place of choice to live, to work, to raise families, to do business. Jamaica is um, progressing in the sense that we have the lowest unemployment level that we have ever experienced. In other words, more people are employed at this time. And you know the jobs is a big thing to work against crime, right? Because if people are occupied and they're getting jobs and so on, they are able to think otherwise. Yes. Um, that is one of the, the, the great uh, things that are happening. The second thing is that I would like to encourage particularly um, the second, third generation of uh, Jamaicans here to think about Jamaica from a sort of a, um, self-interest point of view. And by that I mean, you know, to say that you're from Jamaica, your parents are from Jamaica, doesn't make that cause people to want to be involved. Be right? That's not enough. <laughs> it got to be more. People yeah. must know that there is um, some 
sort of benefit yes. for my relationship there. Yes, and I want to say that there are many, many small investment opportunities in Jamaica. We, you know, going after the billionaire and so on to come and invest in Jamaica is not really the way to go. Yes. The World Bank has done research. The, the, um, the um, USAID has done research. Yes, and they have shown where a country like Jamaica can be way ahead of the game if only all its people were... The diaspora. Yes, the diaspora in particular were involved. So we want to encourage individuals to look and see where are the opportunities in Jamaica for me? Where can I find a way that the funds that I am getting zero point something interest on, that I can get maybe, you know, 5% or 10% yes. on, you know? Yeah. Something like that. So those are the things that I would like to encourage to, to um, look at Jamaica again, look at Jamaica from an investment perspective, a perspective of how you can make use of it. Why am I saying that? Because there are a lot of investors coming into Jamaica and they are the ones who are sort of gaining this thing. And we think that, you know, we'd like to see more of our own people being the owners of, of Jamaica. Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Commissioner, I want to thank you so much for that. Any last word? Any one question? Yes. yes sir. I like asking questions, you know. <laughs> yes. um, I'm Darren Gregg, I'm British born, parents are Jamaican, yeah? It's a bit of a controversial question again, sorry. For British people, what does the Jamaican High Commission do? I don't see anything, sorry. Okay. sorry. The Jamaican High Commission is the representative of the government of Jamaica here in the United Kingdom. Countries um, have relationships. So we have relationships with um, America, Canada, Britain, you know, um, in, in, in Nigeria, you know, various countries that we have relationships with. And those relationships are for several reasons. One, to build good friendly relationship, but also to find ways and means in which we can relate to each other for mutual benefit. So we deal with things that we call bilateral relationships. That means two countries, you know, relating to each other multilateral relationships that is jamaica and the commonwealth of countries the way we relate we deal also with our diaspora which is critical and important and to be able to um you know to work with the diaspora in various ways some of what i was talking about earlier but other things we provide the services the services of uh, what is are called consular services these are the services of like your visa and your passport and all the various other things. So the Jamaica High Commission is a place to be in touch with. And of course, we want to have our mailing list growing so that we can um, invite the many, many events that we have from time to time. Just a few days ago, we had the Independence Church service. And of course, over a thousand people, I guess, were there. But, you know... Those were live stream as well. It was live stream. So you had more thousands as well. That's right. But that's correct. But, you know, we would like to have even more people there. But it's a way in which we want our people in the diaspora to know that Jamaica does, defines itself not just as an island in the Caribbean, but as a nation that is dispersed across the globe. Therefore, wherever you are, you are a part of Jamaica. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, one question. I need to find out. I went over there to inquire about getting a Jamaican passport. I am Jama British by birth. My parents, mother and father are Jamaican. And I'm interested in getting a passport for my son and myself. Now they are telling me that I need to have my parents' birth certificate as proof that my parents were born here. Born there, yeah. sorry. Yes. What can the Jamaica Eye Commission do to assist me? Because my parents are deceased. Okay. And I said, I don't know where I can get their birth certificate. So can, is there anything that the, Jamaica, the Eye Commission can do to help me sure, I have, I get have a birth from certificate? Yes. Is that from there? The, 
you can go back to my colleagues and let them know that you're having a difficulty getting your parents' birth certificate. Yeah. Anyone can apply for your birth certificate, your parents' birth certificate. I could do the same for you who were born mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. I can get your mother's birth certificate. So you yourself can get your mother or father's birth certificate in Jamaica. The Registrar General Department is the, and they were here Two, just, about just about three, three weeks, weeks ago. ago taking applications oh. you could have applied for your mother's birth certificate it would have cost you 40 pounds okay. you can do that online so just say to them that you'd like the application form to apply for your mother's birth certificate I always say to customers start with your mother because your mother's name is always going to be on your birth certificate. For some of us, our father's name is not there. So if your father's name is not there, you cannot get citizenship through him. But most certainly, you can get it through your mother. So just go back to them and ask them for the information on how to get a birth certificate from Jamaica. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Sorry, Commissioner, I'm not going to keep you much longer. Um, so any last word? That's it? Well... It was such a pleasure to be here. Um, I've been here all day, almost. And You're doing the marathon. Been, you always yes, do the marathon. And I'm telling you, <laughs> um, it, it, you know, many people look at us and say, how is it that our community come together like that? Yes. You know, we, our people are so passionate about their country. They are so involved. Um, you know, they, you see all the colors people are wearing. If they're not wearing a wristband with the colors, you know, they're wearing something uh, with, the, with the colors. But we are really a wonderful people. The Jamaica is so well known across this globe. It is one of the few countries that if you took the flag and put it up in the air, people can say which country it is. We are very well known. And why? It's because we have a wonderful diaspora. People who are living in other countries who promote Jamaica. Do you know, as I leave, in the year 2012, the National Geographic magazine published an article showing the top national dishes in the world, the 10 top national dishes in the world. And when they were to check it, Jamaica, Aki and Saltfish was number two, the second most popular national dish in the world. But it goes more than that. You know which one was number one? Jordan. Hamburger. Hamburger. <laughs> Hamburger. Somebody says well, think, of what, <laughs> think of what it took in order to have Burger King, McDonald's, billions of dollars to get hamburger at number one. Question, how did Jamaica come number two? It's because of the power of the Jamaican diaspora. Bless you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, I'm Commissioner. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Round of applause to the Jamaica High Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comments, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.